Japanese roboticists have been at the forefront for decades more than any nation. And there is no doubt that humanoid robots are the cutting edge of artificial intelligence, and hearing such news drives us nuts. If we talk about Japan's female humanoid robots, they can draw, serve, or engage in philosophical discussions. Also, science fiction is no longer fiction in the presence of ginoids. So stay with us because you're going to meet Japan's extraordinary ladies in the next few minutes. Number 5 on our list is Mirai Madoka, a robot receptionist. Mirai Madoka is a friendly appearing robot that was manufactured in Japan by ALAP. In addition to being able to speak three languages, Japanese, English, and Chinese, she also has the ability to move her eyes and lips. Although not a great deal is known about her talents, I felt compelled to include her because of how lifelike she seems. Number 4. The Katamuroi TV Presenter The girl-woman hybrid was built in Japan and is capable of doing a number of straightforward jobs such as reading the news and discussing various scientific concepts. It was given the name Komodo, which is the Japanese word for child. She is capable of speaking in a variety of voices and languages, including a male voice, and she possesses motors throughout her body that causes her face to move in a manner that is convincingly lifelike whenever she does so. At the moment, she is employed at the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation in Tokyo, and if you go there, you may ask her to provide you with directions or to read the weather to you. Number 3. Nadine Nadine is the only robot in the group that's social and nice. It is a robot in the form of a genoi. The physical characteristics of Professor Nadia M. Thalman have been used to model Nadine's body. Kokoro, a Japanese company, came up with it in the year 2013. It is believed to be the follow-up to the robot EVA, which Hanson Robotics developed in the year 2008. The Institute for Media Innovation at Nanyang University in Singapore is responsible for developing the software platform that Nadine runs on. Nadine boasts strong human-like traits like realistic-looking skin and hair. It has the ability to recall people based on the conversations it has had in the past and can provide answers to a variety of questions in a number of different languages. The socially adept robot is able to provide responses in the following set of questions. It is able to alter its demeanor in response to the current dialogue. The robot has a total of 27 degrees of freedom, which allows it to move its upper body in any way it pleases and it allows it to portray a wide variety of facial expressions. It is capable of remembering the specific details and happening associated with each individual. Robotic technology on the cutting edge was used in the creation of Nadine. In order to collect inputs, it comes outfitted with 3D depth cameras, a microphone, and a webcam. The purpose of the robot is to act in the capacity of either a receptionist or a personal trainer. It is able to attend to the unique requirements of the individuals by reading books to them, writing emails, and participating in Skype calls on their behalf. Number 2 is Junko Chihira Imagine that you're visiting Japan as a tourist and that you're looking for some information at the local tourist information center. There's a humanoid robot named Junko Chihira working in Aqua City, Odaiba, which is a shopping center located on Tokyo's waterfront. She has a good chance of being able to answer any questions that you may have. She's a humanoid robot that was made by Toshiba using technology that was invented by Hiroshi Ishiguro, a robotics researcher who works in Osaka. The outstanding interaction abilities that Junko Chihira possesses are complemented by her extensive facial expression repertoire. Additionally, she's able to greet travelers in Japanese, English, and Chinese, which greatly facilitates communication among all parties involved. In addition, Junko is trained to use sign language to communicate with tourists who are deaf or hard of hearing. The creation of Junko Chihiro was made possible by several advances made by Toshiba in the field of artificial intelligence. As a result of being equipped with speech synthesis technology and natural language processing, she's able to comprehend and appropriately respond to queries posed by tourists. Another version of Junko Chihira, known as Kane Chihira, is a more advanced model that can be taught to communicate in any language. Because she was designed exclusively for the tourism and travel business, Kane Chihira is characterized by significantly more fluid motions and enhanced intelligence capabilities. And the number one in our list is Erika. When you watch the news, the news anchor informs you of the most recent developments. But now it's possible that the newscaster in question is a robot. There's a good chance that you're getting your daily news from Erika, a Japanese robot if you're in Japan. Hiroshi Ishiguro, who's the director of the Intelligent Robotics Laboratory at Osaka University, is the person responsible for the creation of Erika. 
She was designed in Japan to be one of the most intelligent humanoids ever created, with a particular focus on her ability to communicate verbally. And despite the fact that Erika is unable to walk, she has a natural ability to communicate with other people and can adapt her expressions to fit the topic of discussion. Erika is able to do this because she has 15 infrared sensors incorporated into her eyes that are able to monitor any movement. This enables her to see in the dark. In addition to this, she's equipped with speech generation algorithms and facial recognition technology, both of which make it simple for her to identify different people in the room. The facial expression that Erika can make are all the result of her built-in 44 degrees of freedom, which allow her to move her head, neck, and waist. Even if she cannot move her arms quite yet, the fact that she's a news anchor makes it so that this is not a significant obstacle for her. In addition, Hiroshi Ishiguro seems to believe that Erika possesses a soul, although this is a subject that sparks a discussion that focuses more on the metaphysics of robotics than it does on technology. So these were Japan-leading humanoid robots that almost look like humans. As we see now, Japan has long been the undisputed leader in robots. If Tanzania's Oldify Gorge is the cradle of humanity, Japan is a cradle of humanoids, having developed the first humanoid robot in the 1970s and numerous variants thereafter. Japanese roboticists pioneered the idea of embodied artificial intelligence. While the West was more concerned with abstract algorithms, Japanese universities believed that AI innovation should be developed alongside, or rather within a physical artificial body. For decades, Japanese roboticists have been at the forefront of realizing the dream of creating companion robots for humans. In addition to nursing and befriending robots for the old and sick, the Japanese have created robots that can battle fires, haul large weights, and provide physical therapy to patients. And as we learned in Chapter 9, the Japanese market for sex robots is also one of the most established in the world. Many of the robots being built are learning to perform multiple functions rather than just one in their most advanced incarnations. It is worth noting that the Japanese are more comfortable with accepting robots as family members than Westerners. In Japan, the belief that machines are kind and giving persists to this day. No doubt, any broad generalization about cultural differences would just be that broad. But there has certainly been a lengthier concentration in Japan on a robot revolution and the rise of AI in all areas of life, whereas American AI has primarily focused on military and marketing goals. One Japanese robotics professor discusses his goal of allocating robots to newborns. The allocated robot will mature and accompany the person throughout their life, serving as a caregiver, friend, bodyguard, and historian. The robot will record and remember all the person goes through and will care for them literally from cradle to grave. They'll be lifelong mates, a robot, a dog, a phone, a cat, a computer, and a doll. Shintoists also believe that there is a true essence to any object or living creature that may be discovered via design, human-shaped nature. Think of a bonsai tree, and nature is everything including machinery and other man-made objects. Robots, like humans, live and exist as part of the natural world in this realm of belief. In Japanese tradition, the distinction between manufactured and natural is thus intrinsically elastic. This is obvious in Japanese folklore, which is rich with stories about items coming to life. So that's all for today, and if you liked today's video, then do check out more videos like this in our channel. Also, do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for more updates.